Welcome back, everyone, to episode two of 2022, our ode to Richie Benno. I made that shit up. Cricket is boring as batshit at the moment because everyone's playing for a draw. So it's all about footy. How are we, Benny? Very How's your well, week been, you, mate? Matty. It's been fantastic, mate. Uh, let's not talk about my week and work and the shit drivers on the road. Let's talk some fucking footy. <laughs> mate, uh, what, uh, what did you get out of the weekend, mate? Oh, mate, look, um, obviously, um, my Dragons little victory there pretty happy with that um, mate it wasn't the most uh, pleasant viewing uh, on that um, afternoon but uh, we got through beat the Warriors and great to get one over two points for the Drags number three in the comp at the moment uh, where are you guys are Sharks well uh, mate I actually think it's great that you made it here tonight I uh, assumed you'd be out getting a premiership trophy or uh, possibly a tattoo seeing you won one game in a row um, mate why are you back? That's uh, what we don't understand. I, I thought the season was over for the Dragons because they got up once. And that's uh, got nothing to do with DeBellum. Already done, mate. Got enough Dragons tattoos. <laughs> one is one too many, <laughs> mate. One is one too many. All right. So what is happening with uh, the Cowboys, mate? What are you, uh, what are your, what's your take on it? The Cowboys, mate. Well, obviously, you got big uh, Jason Tomololo up there um, uh, on a million dollars a year. Um, the coach come out uh, pre-season, said uh, obviously he's willing to use Jason a little bit more. And, uh, mate, I didn't see a lot of it on the weekend. I had a half an hour break on the sidelines. Uh, <laughs> but the big unit can still play football. Um, everyone's a little bit worried about Toddy Pace's decisions, mate, because they seem a little bit loopy. Mate, the whole Cowboys uh, hierarchy seems a little bit loopy. They've got Tom Malalo, Tom Malalo, whatever, you know, sir, if you meet him in person, on a 10-year contract. I, I, don't, I haven't heard of that before. At a million dollars a year, he's the most well-rested player in the NRL. Ever heard of a bloke called Buddy Franklin in the other sport? <laughs> what other sport, mate? Is there another sport? And then we like, 10 years for nothing. Yeah, they, they go on about the Roosters' salary cap. What's going on with the, the Cowboys? You've got Chad Townsend on huge dollars. And... Love to, uh, Chad, great guy. But the Chad, thank you. The Chad, yeah. Um, you got Val Holmes on about a million bucks a year mm -hmm. to play where? Like where, where? Where's he going to play? Well, unfortunately, he's cemented himself a uh, centre spot. Now, uh, that would make him uh, basically <laughs> by about $350,000, the most highest paid centre in the competition. And, um, mate, what do we say for years? He's a winger. He always was. He was an Australian winger. He was the best winger in the world. You can't pay a winger a trillion dollars to come and play on the wing. <laughs> well, apparently the Cowboys can. Well, they won't put him there because he can't run anymore. Mate, they can't win a chook raffle, but they can spend a hell of a lot of money on tickets by the sound of it. Can't hope they can. <laughs> <laughs> right, and there's a lot of rumours about unrest in the squad. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I think it all comes back to that Toddy Payton sort of idea. I think a lot of the experts are, um, are looking at some of the decisions coming from uh, the coach. And look, let's look back at what he'd done with the Warriors over there that year when they were in lockdown. He'd done a fantastic job with that team. He got that Cowboys job off uh, the, that year with the, the Warriors. And we all just assumed that he was just a fantastic coach and man manager. And most of the players up there don't seem to really get along with him. So uh, we might have some troubles there. Interesting to uh, to know what he's on. It would be. I'm I sure Paul uh, Green could tell us. Uh, uh, we'll do some research. We'll get back to you on a fact check on that next week, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Whatever sure happened. Paul Green could. Whatever happened to Paul Green? Greeny has just disappeared off the face of planet Earth. He, he wasn't. Been, a like guy. a lot of other coaches who have come in and gone. I mean, uh, it's probably a bit... You know, you've probably had too many years out of the game to come back. Now it's changed a bit, but you've still got two sitting out there doing nothing. Yeah. Like, you know... Uh, who knows? Mate, but he's only little. He, he's a bit like uh, something falling out of your pocket on the couch. He's, he's probably still there somewhere, but you just can't find it. <laughs> the same with both of them, actually. Mate, uh, I've got a couple of other questions for you uh, coming out of last week. Sure. What's your opinion on Josh Papali? Yeah. I'm going to be corrected, Josh Papali. Josh Papali. But having said that, now. when did that change and how did it change and why did it change and why did no one mention it and it just seems to be smoothed over. Pronunciation seems to be coming a little bit important in the game. We need to make sure we get all these players' names right. Uh, a lot of people getting offended about the littlest shit in the world nowadays. Yeah. So uh, you pronounce their name incorrectly, yeah. mate. What Look, did you say, mate? Matt? Matt? <laughs> mate? Matt? Mate, it's I, Matt. I don't have a problem with people correcting their names, but why for years and years and years it goes on as Papali... Now, all of a sudden, it's Papa Leahy, and that may be the correct pronunciation. You have to assume that they would. Because face, uh, uh, the place of Parramatta, Papa Leahy, in the second row over there, came over for the Warriors, and it's pronounced his name that way. And they went to uh, uh, Josh and said, how's your name pronounced? He goes, oh, the same way, but I didn't, never gave a shit about it. But That's is, what happens when but you the other a mullet. The other boy's mum came out and said, you can't call him Papa Leahy, his name's Papa Leahy. <laughs> 
Mate, but the question I was going to ask you is, do you think he's past his prime? Well, it's really hard to tell with the way Ricky uses his uh, middle forwards. He's got uh, about a 28 uh, uh, middle forwards there to, to rotate through the competition. Now, one week you're seeing an 80-minute Josh Papali'i. Next day you're seeing a 20-minute Josh Papali'i. Then you're seeing a 40-minute Josh Papali'i. Or the now, question I'm putting to you is... Is it two different people? Yeah, well, that's the thing. So there okay. is a Josh Papali and a Josh pa- Papalihi, and perhaps they just look very similar, and think, they just keep changing. I don't think two people can have a beautiful, fluffy mullet like that. Two twin brothers. That's fantastic. Um, but, mate, look, he's, he's getting on a bit. I, I can't see him, obviously, breaking through to that State of Origin team again. I think he has uh, pretty much gone past his time. Glenn um, Hayes liked the The stream. big men in the middle lately, they need to be versatile. They need to be quick. The game's changed. And uh, there's a lot of blokes like that that are just a little behind the times, yeah. I think, Matt. Yeah. And I think he, yeah, he's definitely one of them. Look, I, I think he was a dominant <clears throat> player, as you say. Oh, beast. But the cheap shot crap that's come into his game over the last year or two, you know, I watched him with the Sharks, and of course I'm biased, 100%. But play dead, all over. A winger with his back to him, he walks in and just shoves him in, in his back and pushes a guy over. Well, that comes for no, no reason. Frustration and laziness really done that. I mean, or did he um, just lose him? His hair, you know, the mullet got in front of his eyes, didn't know where he was, he's feeling his way, who knows? Plenty of blokes like that. We'll talk about Jesse Ramian later. <laughs> oh, no, we're not going to. Well, we might, because <laughs> that, that hurts and it's too soon. Uh, what's pissed you off this week oh, in footy well, circles? I'm pissing me off in Glenn footy Hayes circles. Um, we got a bloke in the bunker, uh, apparently, and I didn't find this out until the uh, the end of the round last week. But apparently, we got a bloke in the bunker who was making the decisions in regards to our uh, HIAs on the field. The injury spotter. The injury spotter has been given a name in the uh, the bunker over there. Now, uh, there's a player, uh, look, the name, name escapes me right now, but he was left on the field for 10 minutes after a head clash last week. Uh, obviously, had to be taken off the field, showing absolutely no signs of concussion because the bloke in a bunker over in Redfern, when the game's being played in another state, decides that this bloke's got a, uh, a head trauma. Now, my question is, if they're paying a bloke to sit in the bunker and make up these decisions, there must be some local doctor who's willing to go down for stream. nothing and go down to the field and hang around all these players. I'm talking to you, John Gray. How are you, champion? <laughs> go down and, uh, and, and, and assess these players on the field. An independent bloke, rather than obviously has had the piss taken out of it for a couple of years now. Yeah. Um, and anyone getting a head knock's been taken off for a free interchange. So... Club's yeah. taking the piss, needs someone independent. Totally the wrong way to do it. That is pissing me off. Mate, I, I agree with you. And if we can't get the referee calls right from the bunker, why are we putting this remote person in charge of people's health and well-being? And, um, yeah, and, and look, we were going all right up the half of the weekend up there. But, I, oh, mate, you had a look at that Parramatta versus um, Gold Coast game, was it? Oh, that was an absolute debacle from the video referees uh, and basically cost the Gold Coast the game. Without doubt. Oh, mate. I, I wouldn't be comfortable putting the the well-being of a player in someone remotely. I mean, what are they going to do? Eh, not sure. Can't get a good camera angle. Ref's cool. You must have seen the confusion of the player dragged off. It said, there's nothing wrong with me. I've been on the field for another 10 minutes. I'm confusion? fine. Confusion? Is that a sign of concussion? Well, t- technically. <laughs> but that's a football player, isn't it, really? Yeah. Well, yes. <laughs> uh, mate, one thing that's uh, sort of gotten under my skin this week is uh, I went back, and I know it's not a news story, but uh, the Cameron Munster white powder Come back up, hasn't it? It, uh, He's been interviewed because some reporters decided that they need to make a name for themselves, say something relevant, and I use the term loosely. White powder scandal. Mate, what was it? Well, for starters, the bloke isn't carrying around saddies of salt to put on his chips when he goes to a fucking restaurant. I can tell you that. might have a very serious issue of... uh, uh, jock uh, rash or you know, chafing, and it could have been talcum powder. Let's just call it what it is. The bloke was on the coke. He yeah. fucked up. And he got caught. Let's just say it. The bloke was on the coke. <laughs> it's pretty clear. Uh, the reactions and all the rest of it. But he's on $1.1 million a year, and he gets fined $30,000 and misses one game. Yeah, correct. Do we think that that's a reasonable or relevant fine? Well, whether it's in season or not. Well, whether it be or not, to be in the media bitching and moaning about his one match suspension after what he went through and what he was caught for um, seems a little childish. To say that you're going to tear up one of the most precious things in rugby league, a Melbourne Storm contract, because of the whole situation, yeah, sounds like a uh, frustrated little kid to me. And it's very ambiguous, the whole article. Is he going to tear the contract up or was the Storm going to... The Storm were never going to tear up his contract. 
I didn't see who wrote that, actually. It seemed like a nonsense fluff piece. Mate, it was a load of crap. <laughs> and, and look, you know, a little bit of advice, Munster. Grow up. You're an adult. All right? You've got a baby on the way, if not already here. Mm-hmm. All right? A partner at home that relies on you not to be a dick. You failed. There's other play- places to be, uh, Cameron. <laughs> uh, just a shout out to the lads down there. Donny Rogers is in. Yeah, the boys. Good on you, champion. And Brett McAllister's in. Glad to see the show back up and running. Uh, Doing clearly. our best, mate. Uh, without Brett, we just like to. Uh, we would like to shout out to Brett, but we won't because he's let us down. No. And where are you, Happy? Where's your We're, comments, mate? Come you on, at least Yappy. watch the bloody show. Fire up. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, going back to uh, to one you touched on, game winners and game losers. Game winners and game losers. You've got Latrell Mitchell. Mm-hmm. What, what category does he fall in? He can win a game without doubt. He, he's both. But he he falls into you. both categories easily. And every team's got one. So the Bunnies have got Latrell. The Sharks have got Jesse Ramian. Ramian. Like, what a absolute brain snap cost the Sharks a game. It did without co- any it, doubt. It literally cost you the game. And I mean, I was, I was watching it. There was a lot, lot of skill in that game. I'm really impressed with Nico, but we'll go on with that yeah. later on. But, um... Mate, uh, th- th- these boys have been playing NRL a long time. They're, they're not 21-year-old kids. Um, they've been there for a fair while. Ramey has been around four or five different clubs. Obviously, hasn't lasted there very long. There's got to be a bloody reason, doesn't there? Well, it's very telling when your teammates turn, look on their face and walk the other way. Uh-huh. They didn't come in to console him. They didn't get, don't worry, mate, we'll get it back. They just turned their back and walked away. Dead set shake of the head. Mate. Once again, you get that a little bit from Latrell. Latrell can go out there, he can barnstorm the competition, one of the best fullbacks in the game. Um, but, mate, if you want to go up and, 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 and do the sort of stuff like with Joey Manu last year, which was just frustration and a child, the big child bashing up a little bloke when he wasn't looking. Yeah. But, mate, that's, um, it's, it doesn't show a lot of maturity, does it? No, but look, there's quite a few players that aren't renowned for that. No. Guys, tell us, who, who's the player in your team that can win or cost you a game week in or week out? Oh, we'd love Corey to hear Norman. It. Oh, he's gone. Yes. Where is he? Oh, I don't give a fuck. Well, I do. I don't want him back. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, it scares me a little bit. Mate, a uh, question for you. What do you think about it? Like, do clubs and fans rely too much on the off-season signings? Is this going to... Every year, we oh, we've we've built the right team and we've got these people in and we've signed this one. It, it's all going to turn around. Mm-hmm. There's an old poem by uh, an Australian poet called Bruce Dorr. talks about the new recruit for Eaglehawk. This is 1956. It's always been a big part of rugby league. Your new big recruit that comes to your club is going to save your premiership, uh, save, your, save your season and, and, and get you a premiership. Um, plenty of clubs have done it in the past, trying to buy a premiership. Let's look at Manly, back in the day. Roosters. Every week. Well, they don't <laughs> oh, have, sorry. They don't have a junior comp, so. Um, but um, you, you look at blokes like, as we were talking about it earlier, like the Cowboys. You throw a million dollars at, at, at one bloke and a million dollars at another bloke. Then you got 11 other blokes in the, comp, in the, in the team getting paid $200,000 a week. Now, that cannot create harmony, can it? Oh, going back to that, it's a really good point. We're talking about the Cowboys. There's near enough to $3 million between mm-hmm. Townsend, um, uh, Tom Alalo, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, Val Holmes. Now, how many tries did they score in week one? Well. Between them. Well, technically two, but one. <laughs> so. <laughs> I think the Hammers try was taken off him, wasn't it? Yeah, so really, like, are they getting their value for money? No, I wouldn't I wouldn't agree that they are. Um, uh, I think you look at sides um, that have a, a, a more well-rounded salary cap um, are the teams that are a lot happier, uh, a lot more uniform with each other, a lot happier to train. You don't have the one big wig up there getting a million dollars, rest of them on $250,000. You know, it, it, it keeps a happier team. Yeah. But, mate, you know, Cameron Munster wants to come to the Dragons, have all the money you want. <laughs> <laughs> and you can have him He'd fit right in I think he's uh, pretty good With a pair of barbecue tongs well, I've heard Well we like We like to take all the uh, You know The ruffians of the competition The, the rough uh, diamonds and, uh, and and polish them up Don't we At St George Mate there's coal And you need to burn Wendell, them Wendell Dugan Burn them Etc 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 Oh Brett McAllister Oh You've already done that one, mate. Kimmy's there. Hey, guys. How's how you going? Good Sweet. on you, Kimmy. Love you, Dale. Dave Madden's there. No way. Um, you might have to elaborate, Dave. Elaborate on that one, Dave. We've been uh, talking a fair bit of shit at the moment. So, Lukey John's there. Yeah, Benny. Thanks, champion. Thanks for tuning <laughs> in. 
Mate, you were going to uh, talk to us about the NRLW earlier. What uh, what did you want to bring up with that? Yeah, well, I mean, I sat there and watched all the games over the weekend. Um, basically, Re- research. Said, yeah. Well, research, yeah. most definitely. I've been um, I've been uh, told that I just like to watch the game to see a little bit of boob falling out. Mate, we've already had that this season. Uh, and I think that's a little bit rude saying a little bit of boob. Was she was a well-endowed young lady, and, and I think that uh, is insulting. And me. well done. But um, I, I will say, a lot of these um, girls' games that are being played, a lot of the blokes could learn a hell of a lot from these games. Um, there isn't as much structure. There's more up front, in front of you play. Mate, the hits are hard. They're not fucking around, these girls. No, the There's technique a... is fantastic. The Dragons um, against the Broncos over the weekend, as far yeah. as I'm concerned, including the boys, was basically the game of the round. Um, uh, Dragons getting up over the uh, uh, over the Broncos there. Um, Are you sure? Oh, yeah, Broncos did snabble it in the end, but it was a great game. Um, and our um, our big centre there... From everyone the met our statistician. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> just, just, I, I did watch most of, most of the game. You meant to watch the scoreboard as uh, well, Ben. Missed the, uh, the end of that. But our big uh, front rower from Papua New Guinea, the Papua New Guinean captain over there, mate, you, you watch that thing run and try and stop it. It is a beast. <laughs> I'm not sure that... Uh, not that it's a priority for us being politically correct, but I don't know that that was politically correct. Uh, yeah, so the Broncos got up 22 over the Dragons 18, but a tight game. It was a good game. Um, Roosters did away with the Knights girls pretty easily. Uh, yeah, was um, pretty comfortable. well, the Roosters got our uh, our girl over there, Jess Sergis, in the centres over there, one of the best players in Australia. I think she um, was the, the Roosters equivalent of the um, uh, the women's equivalent of the Dally M last year. Um, absolute champion of a player and um, mate good on the Knights uh, first year in the competition um, as are the Titans and doing pretty well uh, a couple more teams coming in the next couple of years mate yeah, there was talk actually of the uh, the Roosters men's team being transferred across but apparently they were no competition so they were rejected <laughs> I'm sure plenty of teams could fill in that spot the dogs con sorry mate <laughs> uh, well, mate, they're higher up than the Roosters. We too would have picked that. They sure are. Fifteenth <laughs> and uh, and and sixteenth, the uh, the Roosters and Manly at the moment, uh, all expected to be in the top four. Yep. Again, rejected by the women's comp. Mm-hmm. Mate, the uh, Eels got up twenty four over the Titans fourteen. Yeah, Still, they sure did. Uh, it was a good game. Uh, Matty Studden in there uh, controlling the action for <coughs> uh, for Parramatta. Yeah, Sorry. Canoth. Yeah, yeah. yeah, played for the Dragons the last couple of years as well. Um, I'm yeah. pretty sure that's what we'll be talking about. The next couple of uh, girls teams coming through. I'm pretty sure the Sharks were, um, were, were were quite heavy on the girls' game before all this started. Yeah. Uh, the Dragons team got in, I think, just through the name and the jersey. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but when we talk about expansion of this uh, ladies' game, I think uh, your boys need to be included. Your or, girls, sorry. Or girls would your be girls probably a little more apt. Included. Um, and, and, but, a bit out of practice with this sort of stuff, you know what I mean? We're doing our best. <laughs> so, so my understanding is there'll be another two teams next year. Another two teams next year, another two teams coming the year after, yeah. I believe. Um, so, that's some pretty fast expansion, but uh, it shows the uh, the numbers of the, the young girls in the competition at the moment. Just literally next door to our studio over here, we had two uh, young girls teams um, training in the park. and um, it explains why you were late. Uh, <laughs> got to run your eyes over these things, mate. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a stats man. I'm a journalist. You've got to know all about it. We'll stick with that, shall we? Uh, so, <laughs> it, it, summing that up, mate, I, I think the skills there, the talent, without a doubt, I think the depth is there. Yep. Because even though they're not necessarily NRLW teams, you know, the Sharks have got a squad, you know, um, Rabbits have got a squad. So, there's quite a number of uh, Titans are ready to go. Yep. Uh, the depth's there. I don't think the expansion is going to be an issue at all. And I think it may take away a little bit of the shine from the men's game. Well, 100%. I mean, like w- w- one thing that, obviously, as I said, that the boys can learn off the girls there is just the amount of structure in the boys' game. You can almost see what's coming before it starts. You, you start these big sweeping plays over to the left. These girls just go. They see what's in front of them, and they yeah. just do their very best, you know? That's like, exactly it, mate. Like, they uh, play uh, what's in front of them. 100%. The guys it's, it's are obsessed football. with set moves and committing to a certain play. It breaks down and the whole thing goes to shit. Mm-hmm. All right, the women they will react to what's in front of them. They'll get the ball down. They go again. Uh, it's a similar style of play to touch footy. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you know, with the tackle and the contact involved, but just that fast moving pace and adjusting, changing direction, you know, misdirections, things like that. I think, yeah. I think it's a, a great. Um, spectacle to watch. Yeah, skill level is amazing. Yeah. It is. Like, if, if you haven't had a look, get in there and have a look. Mate, we probably should touch on uh, the games from last round, but only briefly. Let's. Uh, the results were shit. <laughs> <sighs> mate, Panthers 28, Seagull 6. Well, mate, I did not 
I tip the Seagulls. So I, I, I just, I just expected a, a, a team that won the Premiership last year, like the Panthers, to um, uh, uh, come out, you know, probably a little bit lacklustre and probably expect themselves to be really good. But to come out as good as what they were without Nathan Cleary, Sean O'Sullivan, uh, mm. Sauce. For uh, yeah. for the Panthers was fantastic, um, as was Dylan Edwards at the back. Um, Seagulls a bit to work on. Mate, they have got some uh, uh, cattle coming back this week, though. To be sure, to be sure. Yeah. Um, but um, up against the Dragons this week. <laughs> Let's see how you go there, Panthers. Yeah, I'll carve <laughs> you up. Let's be honest. Um, Raiders 24, Sharks 19. Take out Ramian's uh, brilliance. And I think it's a, anyone's game, to be honest. What were your thoughts? I thought you had it, to be honest. Yeah. I thought I thought you had it, and and I did tip the Sharks last week, uh, whereas uh, the missus tipped the uh, the Raiders. That was the big difference in the week. She ended up with the uh, the old five. I got lazy four. Um, grinding football, and uh, pretty impressed with Nico Hines. I have to say, mate, Nico, I think he's proved himself. Love you. A little early to say. Well, I would. Uh, a little early to say um, <laughs> that he's definitely cemented his spot, but I think he'd be hard-pressed to be pushed out. Mate, Broncos 11, Bunnies 4. Again, this is me 0-3 at this stage. Shocked. <laughs> Shocked and dismayed at this result. Um, I had a fair bit of um, investment going on in the Bunnies in this game, actually, sitting there uh, with a couple of cans deep. Uh, decided to throw a couple of bets on the old footy tab. Uh, yeah, that didn't work out for me, did it? No. But well done to the Broncos. I mean... Uh, that field goal. Genius! No, oh, Kurt Capewell, one of your boys. Oh, well. Hey? He's dead to me. Um, dead to me. We don't talk about his yeah, name in the house. We don't, use, like a, we don't McKin- use the C word. Is that like Cam McInnes in no, the house? It, mate, in all seriousness, it, someone that's a practised a field goal um, aficionado would be hard-pressed to nail that one. Honestly, I... It was I, fumbling I, on the ground. He had to pick it up and he was getting... Come on, as good hard. a field goal as I've seen. Yeah, honestly, uh, uh, I think he's going to play a big role for the Broncos up there this year. Well, yeah, captain courageous, mm-hmm. mate. Uh, Rooster six Knights twenty. Um, I went four so far. Wow, yeah. As, as am I. As am I up to this point. Um, and I'm watching this at uh, Tarrant Point Bowling Club. A couple of schooners deep once again. Mm. Jesus, a theme here, isn't there, Matt? No, oh, I have a bit of a problem. Yeah. Anyway, well, um, is it for <laughs> yeah. Dane Gagai, uh, immense in this game, and I have apology to make to um, Adam O'Brien. As I said, uh, I thought that he would be the first coach to go this season. You keep their t- team keeps playing like that, um, mate. It'll be there for a long time. <laughs> yeah, mate. Warriors sixteen, Dragons twenty eight. Uh, Owen five, going well here so far. Moving on, Tigers sixteen, Storm twenty six. Go you Dragons! Well done, boys. Um, that, I think I got that was one. <laughs> yeah, no, I did pick the Storm in that one. Yeah. I mean, uh, quite a courageous performance from the Storm with yeah. uh, three blokes going out injured. Brandon Smith, broken hand, etc., etc., etc. The Tigers had a great first. The, the enthusiasm coming out of the Tigers team. And then the whistle blew and the game started and... No, their first half was fantastic, Matty. Give them a bloody, give them a break. No. These Tigers fans, they've, they've had enough, the Tigers fans. <laughs> Mate, it was um, 32, Titans 28. Good game, nice and tight. Uh, I think the Titans got robbed. Game of the round, Titans robbed. Yeah. 100%. We were talking about this earlier in regards yeah. to the bunker. Those three penalties towards the end um, ruined their game. Without doubt. Just be a little bit nice to see David Fafita touch the ball and, and do something. One run down the side, bumped off four blokes. I did not see him touch a ball the rest of the game. No, only his own when he was adjusting. I'm but, sure he uh, did after the game when he was in the <laughs> ice bath. Allegedly. Mate, uh, this week, what are your thoughts? We... Punters, what have we got? Uh, David Madden, frustration set in. Yes, a brain snap. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Kieran Symes. Ha, ha, ha. The big dog sound effects in the background. We'd yeah. like to pretend they're sound effects, but it is the big dog. Yeah, the big dog. <laughs> Lukey John's in there. Go the Sharkies. Big Sharks fan. Good on you, Lukey and the Michaels family. Good luck to you. <laughs> Mate, Donnie Rogers. Boys, former Sharks back rower Nick Graham is watching. Go, oh, you big blood nut, you. Hello, Nico. On you, Nico. How are you, champion? Love you, mate. Mate. <laughs> mate How so... you going the ponies on the weekend, Nick? Mate, Nick, never. Never. <laughs> He's a cultured young man. Um, Storm, Storm Rabbits. Tips, brother. Storm Rabbits. Who have you got? 
Mate, that'll be the storm for me. Uh, Bunnies came out uh, last week a little bit lacklustre. I do Im uh, uh, foresee improvement with uh, Latrell back. Um, I think it's going to take a little bit of time for Lockie Ilias and um, uh, Cody Walker to mould together. Cody Walker switching left and right last yep. week. Concentrate on that left-hand side. Right. Just do what you're doing I see rabbits year. in a tight one, in my, in my opinion. But yeah, uh, no, having call. said that, I got uh, two from eight, so don't listen to a word I fucking say. Um, <laughs> Dragons, Panthers. Clearly the Panthers moving on. <laughs> I, 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 I agree. I agree. Uh, Roosters, Dragons, right? Roosters sea Eagles. I, I think they're sea Eagles. Roosters won't come back that quick. Look, um, it'll be Tommy Trevojevic against the Roosters, as, yeah. we, as we well know. If Tommy yep. Trevojevic fires, uh, Eagles beat the Roosters by a fair bit. If yeah. he, they can shut him down, I mean, I don't think we write the uh, Roosters off yet. I think they're, um, no, they're still a force. In the I don't think it'll be an easy win, but I think Eagles, uh, and they've got cattle coming back. DCE Good needs to... Good first three games. Needs to prove himself uh, highest paid man in rugby Keen league. Keen uh, Titans Warriors. I have tipped the, tipped the tits. Yeah, this I, one. I think Titans um, for me. Um, I think the Warriors, a couple of... Um, Sean Johnson gone. A couple of injury issues. Sean Johnson gone. Um, and um, Jermaine Tanua Brown, big uh, big meanie, uh, the rapper, gone off the bench. Uh, it was a great signing for them. Yep. Sharks, Eels? <sighs> eels. Are you saying that because you think it? or you? No, 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 I actually do think the yeah. Eels were absolutely on fire and probably the team of the week last week. Um, yeah. I think they look fantastic. Uh, Ryan Madison out. I don't think that's going to hurt them too much. I haven't seen touch a ball on the yeah. weekend. Look, I, I I think the Sharks mainly because Eels have a tendency to be very inconsistent. They do a great, comfortable win, and they are complacent the next week. So if Sharks are on, I think they can get over agree the Eels. Agree to agree. Um, I, I have tipped them to. And look yeah. out for Roycey Hunt, the AFS player of the uh, the round. Beast. Um, mate, Cowboys Raiders. I think the Raiders will follow on from what they done last week. I think uh, there's plenty of um, energy in the tank for their uh, middle forwards. Uh, edge back rowers went well, um, and. Um, Nickel clock start at the back. I uh, wasn't quite sure whether he was going to get that spot over young Savage, but um, what a fantastic game for a bloke who hasn't played much football the last year or so. Yeah, I say Cowboys, too many uh, Steve Austins in the team. Yeah. And all the man, they need to uh, <laughs> fire up and deliver. They really need to do something there. Knights, Tigers. I'm going to go the Tigs in this one. I was pretty impressed with what they uh, pulled against the Storm last week. Uh, very uh, impressed with what the Knights did last week, though. I, I just, I'm just i not 100% sure whether they keep that form up uh, yeah. and whether, um, uh, uh, what's his name, the halfback, um, can keep it up because he played a, a mad game. I suggest by Agra. Knights. Um, uh, Knights for me and Dogs, Broncos, I say Broncos. Broncos keep their form together, I think. Reynolds um, in. Yeah, Reynolds back in yep. and Selwyn Cobbo for a hat trick on the wing. Back five bucks on that, ladies and gentlemen. That's, uh, that's a big call. Big call. Fair call. Played fantastically last week. Mate, absolutely. Mate, uh, have you got any uh, late mail for us? Anything that we should be keeping an eye out for? What's your, uh, what's your tip of the week? Well, we've got the camera half, obviously, out with um, COVID. Young Schneider. Um, he will go out with anyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's out, but um, I mean that's our that's our uh, our second loss for the year already. We're only round two. Reynolds round one. Mm. Schneider round two. Um, mate, I'm, I'm a little bit worried about how it's going to interrupt our season. I mean, I was hoping for a pretty COVID-free season so far, but um, so sounds like we're going to have to put that for, uh, put up with this for most of the weeks. Um, we got ruptures um, at the Eels camp. Uh, we got Jared Hain out in the piss with uh, Nathan Brown over the weekend. Oh, there we uh, go. Like there that's go. Um, like a, a maths equation. Dickhead multiplied by dickhead. <laughs> it fucking is too. Isn't oh. it? that's like that cross crossed. And, and then squared, firing squared, up. Squared, sorry, is a little yeah. too over the top. Fuck with squared. Yes, uh, yeah, dickhead. Someone gave uh, Jared Hayne a bit of shit. Nathan Brown decided to take it into his own hands. Yeah. And apparently there's a lot of players there at the Eels that aren't really happy about the whole situation. So, uh, no. ruptures within the squad at the Eels. Mate, uh, I have heard a couple of rumours this week. Um, cannot confirm nor deny them, Your Honour. Uh, but uh, the, the talk is Trent Barrett looking at an early exit from the Dogs if he hasn't delivered by round six. Are you on there, Con? Give us a, the deal. Um, Gus has come out and stated that Trent has the full support of the entire board. Oh, he's gone. So I reckon round four is probably more likely. Oh, he's gone. Six. What yeah. I was worried, wondering about this dog situation is what is a pass mark for the dogs? Is it improvement? Is it an improvement in training habits? Is it results-based. Oh, now, when it comes to results-based, if you're the wooden spooner, basically, from the year before, so you can't say if good. you don't get four out of your next eight games 
and and win them. Yeah. I don't think that's I, I don't think that's a fair marker. Yeah, well, I think you need to look at what's going in and around. And if he's coming out and saying that it's a game and results based thing like that, there's more shit going on in the background. I can guarantee you that. I'm saying there's there's a lot of rumours about the players saying it was the easiest right. pre-season they've ever had. We need to wind this up. Uh, and wind. to answer your question, the pass market, the dogs are to be able to walk on a leash. Um, Madge is apparently looking to follow hour. Pierce overseas as uh, his Aussie coaching future is in doubt. He's looking at the reserve grade in French Division 3. Um, Wayne Bennett is apparently heading up an advisory board on everything. Uh, just ask him, and if you want a second opinion, ask him twice. Um, Marty Tapao is looking to replace Tom Alolo at the Cowboys if Mrs. Tapao says it's okay. We'll have to check with that. And he will. And happy St. Patrick's Day to, for tomorrow, everyone. Happy St. Patrick's Enjoy. Day. I'll be having a couple Hence of... Hence the Kill County. I'll be having a couple of pints of Guinness up at Boyle's Hotel, that's, Sutherland. That's birthday. And um, let's just give a uh, massive uh, hurrah to uh, Matty over here. It's his birthday tomorrow. He's 75th. Uh, congratulations, <laughs> champion. You don't look a day under 78. Mate, I look good for that age, I tell you. <laughs> Mate, I have dead set, seen better beer, uh, heads on my beer. <laughs> but thank you, everyone. And you Enjoy boy. St. Patrick's Day. Enjoy your week. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for ponting. <laughs>